Hey guys, it's Alex over at Laser Everything, and in this next section of videos for the ultimate guide to laser processing, we're going to be covering how to figure out what kind of laser source you're working with. And to keep things simple, we're going to do separate videos for fiber, UV, CO2 RF tubes, CO2 glass tubes, and diode laser modules. Today's episode is going to be a pretty short one, guys, because UV lasers don't have a laser path like a fiber laser does. Instead, where the laser path would normally be, we have our laser source. In fact, none of the source components are stored in the main box at all because UV lasers can't send their lasers through a fiber optic cable. So everything we need is already right here, exposed to us right behind the scan head. And that makes this really easy. And this is really important. This box is the laser source itself. This is not a container that holds the laser source. It's not a shell. It is the actual laser source and it's very important that you do not open this box. Opening a laser source outside of a clean room environment pretty much guarantees doom for that device. So you want to keep this closed. When you're trying to identify a UV laser source, the sticker is always on the outside of the source. You just have to look around for it. This is true for both major manufacturers of UV laser sources. So that would be JPT and Ingo. Here's my Ingu laser source pictured here. You can see it's the Grace X 355 5A. That's the 5 watt air cooled. It also includes a serial number and a date of manufacture. And there we go. That's all the information we need. If you have a JPT, it's a very similar situation. Here is the label on Kyle's JPT laser source and everything you need is right there as well. For now though, you've got your source information. So what do you do with it? Well, of course you can always Google search things, but I'd also recommend heading over to makearmy.io where you can see our laser source database. And if we go ahead and give that a click, you'll see a ton of different laser sources listed here with more information about them. We'll check out some of the most common JPT laser sources for UV lasers right here. So if we click JPT on the right side over here, we can actually filter by wavelength. And since we're talking about UV lasers today, we can click 355 and that'll show us the JPT UV laser sources that we have in the database. The 355 5A Lark model is one of the more popular ones. We can go ahead and check this out and inside you can see we've got laser wattage, wavelength, pulse width, we've got our beam quality and beam diameter, and a bunch of other information about electrical as well. So once you get that information you are ready to get your UV laser set up in Lightburn. And again, you can find this at makearmy.io under the laser source database to get all the information you need to set your laser up properly inside of Lightburn once we get to that point. So this is something you're going to want to bookmark because we're going to come back to this page over and over again. If for some reason you can't find your source in this database or your source is missing information, feel free to reach out to me and let me know. We can get it added if you do have the data for it. If you don't, I'm sure we can find somebody that has a similar source in the community. Hit us up over at Discord or at masters.lasereverything.net if you want to support the channel, and we can help you discover the accurate details about your laser source so you can get your machine set up properly. That's all for now. There's a lot more to discuss as far as what's going on inside of this machine, but we're going to save that for a little later on in the guide when we do our basic laser anatomy video. So if you're curious about what everything inside of this case does, hang on. That video should be coming at you in at most a month or two when we get a little bit further along in the course and we've got our machine operational. So we'll swing back around to that later. For now though, guys, I think that's it. That should be everything you need in order to get the basic information about your laser source that we're going to need when we move on to installing and configuring Lightburn. I hope you found that helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.